Blog Talk Radio. You may have Sunny now, but I'll always have a part of Mike. But I did give him his watch back. Welcome to Take Two Radio. We are pleased to bring you interviews with people in the entertainment and music industry, discussions and recaps of the four remaining daytime soaps, that's The Bold and the Beautiful, The Young and the Restless, General Hospital, and Days of Our Lives, as well as various other shows. For upcoming and previous shows, check Take2Radio.com, that's with the number two, and you can find us on Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, iTunes, and other streaming apps. Follow us on social media at Take Two Radio, and thanks for listening. Hey, hey, Good hey, evening. everyone out there! <laughs> Go ahead, David. Good evening, everybody. I'm David from Take Two Radio, um, Soaps and Review. Your stand-in host today for Pam. Um, with me, I have Anthony. Hey, 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 folks. And we are and we'll be Candace. joined in a few minutes, yeah, by Candace. The um, other lady uh, and Will are taking the evening off. You know, we've been throwing in some extra shows recently. Last week we had an amazing interview with Esther Terblanche, who you may remember as Jillian from All My Children. And, you know, with all luck and stars aligning in the right ways, Maybe we'll see, uh, you know, a Jillian-like character on one of our shows in the near future. So if you um, like so. that interview, please go to Facebook and share our postings and um, hashtag, um, you know, hire Esther. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Hi, Candace. Hi. Hey, girly girl. What's going on? How are you doing? Uh, you know, enjoying uh, enjoying some of the soap storylines. Enjoying. Mm. I actually, I, I'm now. actually going to say all all four shows is giving me something to look forward to. I would have to agree with that. And after last oh. week, I'm really glad that we can both say that. But you know, before we yeah. jump into yeah. before we jump into the four shows that that we're here to talk about. Why don't you give us an update on Forever, Forever in a Day? What's oh, going on? For, oh, Forever in a Day! Oh my gosh, that show! That show! First and foremost, I have to do do this because I literally this is why I was running a little bit late. I want to thank everybody who has downloaded and listened to our shows. Um, we've definitely come a long way, obviously, if you've been following. Um, we are still in production with season three. But next month, uh, November 23rd, is our Thanksgiving episode. And I can't tell you anything. I can't tell you anything. All I can say is, yeah, all I can say is we'll be on Thanksgiving (laughs) on November 23rd. And that's our Thanksgiving episode. And that's going to be on JLJ Media and all streaming services. And then come February is season three, and if you think you know what's going to happen, all I can tell you is, no, you don't. (laughs) (laughs) Are there going to be some interesting uh, Thanksgiving side It's going to be some interesting (laughs) twists and turns, and here's the deal. I I need for people to also go back and listen to season two, because we did leave um, you guys with a cliffhanger. Uh, there was a, 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 in case y'all didn't hear, there was a little bang, 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 and don't know who was made it. it. I don't. It I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happened. Uh, I don't know who made it. I, I, they gotta talk to those writers. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. But I can say this. I will address this right now. There was a rim apprentice for one of the characters. I can honestly say that's not going to happen for right now. Oh, all right. Oh, well, yeah, and there we may have. be some special so, guests it's coming up in season three. 
Okay. That's gonna blow some. Pe- okay. That's gonna be blowing yeah. some people's minds. Like, and I'm not just saying it because you know I'm excited. I actually can confirm that there's gonna be some uh, people, interesting people, coming to Augusta, <laughs> Illinois, on Forever in a Day, and I can't say anything <laughs> else except for some of these people on this panel are gonna be so mad at me for not telling them sooner. <laughs> Well, girl, some of the people, Probably. some of the people on this panel are still waiting for our guest star invitation. I wrote the, I wrote, I, 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 I wrote. I will be talking to my people. Will contact your people you in, got in it, the next girl. couple of in the next couple of there minutes. <laughs> well, we so also guys, have yeah. good. We also have another <laughs> piece of really good news um, to friends of the show. Uh, we were mourning the loss of Michael Slade a couple of months ago on this show. And we were lamented of the fact that he got you right. All that he wanted out of, of a goodbye episode with Riley's um, project. And we, I am very, very happy to announce that they are going into production for season three. Finally, with um, all of the COVID stops and starts so we should be we should be able to see those episodes start dropping early next year, early 2022. Um, it was there always written oh, in the trilogy, wonderful. and I would imagine with some of the hints that were dropped right here on this show, that season three is going to be wonderful, and um, I'm sure Kevin will come back and um, you know and promote it here. But either way, Kevin, congratulations for putting it all together and finally getting that last season off the ground. Yeah, exactly, and uh, exactly, and I think it. I mean, it's been a minute, but also, um, you know, speaking of, you know, obviously, so we do want to send our thoughts and condolences to the family of Michael Tylo, Tylo, um, yeah. mm-hmm. who passed away on uh, September 29th. Um, the reason is undisclosed at the moment, but you know, Michael, <laughs> look. Some people knew him, Young and the Rustless, Bowen the Beautiful. You know, he did, I think General he did Hospital. as well, but I, General Hospital. But I think the primary role that everybody remembers him as is Quinn Reardon. I'm sorry, Quinn Chamberlain on Gone Light during the 80s, Nola and Quinn. Look, look, yep. you would not find that. Yep. You will never find a couple like that. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it. Um, and if you go to. Um, the locker room for uh they had daytime stars and strikes which raised money for autism and um which Take Two has been a part of as sponsor uh, sponsoring uh the event uh, when it was in live um in person um as well. And um they had uh Maeve who played Vanessa, Jerry Van Dorn, uh to share some memories. So we here at Take Two will also like I said, uh send our condolences to uh the family and friends of Michael Tylo and like I said, it, it look he was one of those actors who could pull it off. Yeah. Seriously, was it you know Yes he could um yeah, but Did it you just see was um, Hunter's statement? Yeah. Yes. It was beautiful. Let me, no, I did not. I, 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 uh, let me. Please go ahead. If you have it. <laughs> Don't have it up, but but she did she did post on social media about it. Um, you know. Let me just say this while I'm I'm, I'm finding it, um, Anthony. Unless you have it up. No, I don't have an episode. Please find it. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, guys, talk about talk about yourself <laughs> while I'm trying to find it. Okay. But, um, let's see. How about them red socks? Okay. Let's see. <laughs> right. How about them red right? socks? There you go. It's coming um, up. It's coming up on the season. Let's see here. Do Talk again. Talk about yourself. There you go. Uh, but no, if, if you go on, to, I would I would say we'll post the link. Um, but yeah, again, like I said, you know, it it, it was shocking because I I was, you know, when you're you know on social media and everything, random things pop up left and right, you know, and and then all of a sudden they, you know, I I think I saw it like somebody had confirmed it, and then the next thing I know, I saw like. 
of the official Bold and the Beautiful Young and the Ruffles uh, social media accounts um, posting about it. And it was just like, wait, what? Like, you know, like, what? Like, what? Quit? That's how I do him, you know. And, uh, you know, Lisa Brown also had uh, I mean, what- did a little um, – statement as well saying that her heart goes out to the family and friends and that she will always remember the good times you know because Clint Clint, if you don't know about that all I can say is this Go on YouTube. That was go on YouTube yeah. and look it up. Yeah. That was that was you will like I said. I think that was one of the first times that and the audience participation because they were trying to name their baby and they asked the audience, the viewers, to, to submit names and stuff yeah. like that. I mean that. Yeah, so that was pretty cool too. But um, yeah, I mean, that's why we always say to appreciate each other now instead of later. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and give give uh Absolutely. the roses, give the flowers now. Um, you know, and that's why when we talk about a certain um soap opera, I I'm gonna be honest, this person deserves an Emmy nomination, deserves all the flowers, uh, for his portrayal of a character, 'cause woo. Yeah. Woo. Woo. But we're also That's looking at about um, <laughs> we're also looking at some very good news. Um one of our favorites returns to the screen this week. Um Maggie, aka Suzanne. Yay! Yep. Yeah. She's back. Did um did you folks know how much she was actually going through during during the um, sabbatical I did let's call it? Not, not exactly. I did not know. I didn't know until I read all of that, and I was just like, "Yeah, you know what? That <sighs> real quick. I'm just gonna say this now. When you take your medication, please make sure you chop it up, or do you know? Just, I'm not doing a dig. I just I do know yeah, people who have, you know, swallow, you know, and stuff. If again, we gotta pull that article up, but she explained in full detail. Yeah, it was everything. Detail. That way, yeah. you, and it wasn't just like a normal vacation. Because I think some people thought it was, oh, you gave her a nice vacation. Whoa. No. So. No, it wasn't a vacation. Now, now I no. will say uh, that, and you guys going to have to help me, but it's the um, makeup artists and, and other the behind the scenes people that are really important to uh, television. Yes. There, uh, the deadline, yeah, right now, and if you guys don't know what we're talking about, there's a strike that's pending. And this strike is the production. Like, no. the production. Um, they have until, let's see, what, midnight, midnight Friday, Sunday? Yeah, yeah no, midnight Saturday going it, into Sunday. Midnight Saturday, okay, going to Sunday, thank you. Yeah. Um, if they do not uh, agree on anything, productions on all shows, including Days, Bold, Young and the Restless, and General Hospital, will yeah. stop. So for those who are wondering, oh, no, what does that mean for our shows? Okay. Days of Our Lives has enough episodes. Now, this is to say if they do the strike and it prolongs past a certain time frame, okay? Well, Days will have enough right, episodes ahead. till December, January. GH, Bold, and Young will have enough to go into late November, early December. That's if, if, if again, hopefully everybody make sure you support hashtag Look up. We support. Look, these people get to work before the actors, the writers, and everybody else. You got to think about it. this is the That's makeup true. team, this is the production team, this is the, the lighting people, the caterers, the the people that get the, the tiny little lint off of your the bum, the 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 guy who brings the water to make it look like it's about to rain. That's who else. Your editors, exactly. you got everybody. So this is really important, and they deserve the same treatment. Um, but this is uh, this is one of those things where I, I I made a I made a comment. I said, okay, last year was something that we couldn't prevent corona. This year, it's this voting 
for, you know, equal treatment, higher pay, and it's like, okay, <clears throat> so next year is the deal. alien invasion. <laughs> Here's the deal, because I, I, was, I really wanted to address this, Candace. I'm glad you brought it up first, um, but I uh-huh. definitely wanted to address this before we got into talking about the shows. Um, for those of you on social media who are putting out there, oh, well, you know, they'll just hire temporary folks like they did during the writer strike. Here's the deal, There's folks. not enough to go That's- around. A, there's not enough to go around, and B, the union and contracts and the way that, you know, these contracts are written, they can't just hire folks to come in. First and foremost, think about going to any business. If the entire business, if the entire staff of the business walked out one day, your favorite Macy's, your favorite Chipotle, whatever it be, are you going to walk in and get the same level of service with a whole temporary crew that's walking off walking in off the streets on day, you know, day one? No. But yeah. none, besides the fact, it's a moot point because of the way the contracts are written. They cannot hire in most of the areas. In a few of the areas, they could. But because it's a, an all-encompassing back, uh, what they call back-of-the-house um, strike, they can't, they, can't hire a, 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 they can't hire makeup artists. They can't hire... Um, electricians, et cetera, et cetera. So without that support staff, they couldn't hire the staff that they could hire to keep the show running. So if the strike happens, and this is beyond soaps, this is many, many oh, yeah. shows that are going to be affected. Is if the strike happens, production yeah. is going to shut down, period. So when you're, you know, when you're hashtagging out no big deal and, and all of the, the, you know, the show, will, the show will go on no matter what tweets, know what you're talking about. The show will not go on. If the strike happens, it's, it's, we're going back 12, 13 years ago when, when you know, we had a different strike, and the shows were all for, I, I think it was three weeks that they were, you yeah. know, they were backlogged months, by the I time think it was everything three was three months. On. Was it three, three wow, months? Three months that long. I My think, I think, yeah, the, I think so. the writer's strike, the writer's strike was, was months. I remember that. And another strike was like about six to eight weeks. So that was a, wow. that was a month, too. But yeah, that was that was the back of the house think, strike. Yeah. yeah, but you also got to think about the fact that this is a new a new time frame, you know. Yeah, and we also and, have to think about like, the fact that yeah. over the last you know ten, twelve, thirteen, fifteen years, the industry has been growing more and more budget conscious. So. You know, folks, yep. like the actors will tell us when we come on here, they've never worked as hard in this industry as they have in the last 10 years, as they, as production has sped up, as they've cut every single corner that they can. So if it's that hard on the actors, think about the, you know, the production staff where you had, you know, five, six people in the makeup room, you had five, six people under the costume designer, you, you know, you had a support staff, you had hundreds and hundreds of people that were making these shows happen. And now you're at a bare bones skeleton crew, two or three in the makeup room. You've got one person, you know, corralling all of the costuming. You've got, you know, bare bones it's production yeah. crew. They, they cut one more person and the show is going to flop because there's just not going to be enough people to run it. So all of the added responsibility, unfortunately, they didn't cut 20 jobs and divide those 20 salaries among the people that were still going to be there picking up all the extra work. The, these folks are not, are, are not, you know, heading towards a strike because, hey, you know, we just want to make as much as the actors do. They want to be, par- they want to be paid fair and equitably. You can never get that word out right, equitably. Yeah. For the work that they put they in. They want fair treatment. They want fair they treatment. Want fair they treatment. want fair pay. And they want to be recognized that without them, the sh- you know, without the actors, we have no show. Without the writers, we have no show. Well, guess what? Without the production staff, we have no show. And so, you know, for all of you folks out there that are tweeting that this is no big deal and this will blow over and they should put on their big boy or big girl panties and just get the work done, you know, imagine somebody saying that to your mother, your brother, your, you know, your father, yourself, in the job that you go to for 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week and put your heart and soul in to make sure that your work, your quality, what you put out into the world is the best it can be. No, it is a big deal, and it is worth fighting for. It is worth standing behind 
everyday working folks who happen to be working with some glamorous, you know, some glamorous uh, stars and some glamour, you know, their work facilitates the beautiful stuff that we that comes across our television screens, either daily or, or weekly. Right. Amen so, to that. I, you know, everybody knows that I have a soapbox and it lives under the, under the couch, and every once in a while I pull it out and jump right up on it. Soapbox for, uh, you know, yep. Soap Opera Take Two Network. There you go. <laughs> right. But honestly, you know, folks, the next time you send that tweet out, really think about what you're saying. Really think about what it, what message you're putting out there because it's disheartening to these folks to see so many people ragging on them for standing up for what we should all stand up for. Equal pay. Equal respect. You know, all of those all of those things that make going into work and making the job that we do worth doing. All right, I'm putting it putting the soapbox back okay. under the couch. <laughs> no. Candace, can you get us started on Y and R, please? Okay. So love is in the air. Everywhere you look, love is love. Uh, yeah. That's that was right. That's how that's how it was. That's it. So all right. Here here's here's we have a I'm wedding. gonna do my best. We have a wedding. We have Here a comes wedding. The bride. And we also all Roll just the that ex- <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. I saw that wedding dress. If you go to Young mm. Boss's uh, social media, uh, Mil- Amelia Heine, yeah, uh, did she did behind the scenes. Let me tell you something. This is how looks can be deceiving. I saw the front. Not too happy about it. Saw the back. I was like, that's right. That's right. That, that, show that skin, girl. Work it out. But y'all know Billy is as jealous <laughs> as I don't know what. So Billy is gun ho. Yep. First he was invited, then he wasn't invited. But he came anyway because you know he's nothing like that. And it's Billy Abbott. He wants to be right about everything and anything. So him and Lily and pretty much half of the GC crew is over at that beautiful, the beautiful new set that I need for them to keep. I don't know if y'all seen yeah, the it, palazzo. but the Palazzo, the let me palazzo. tell you, palazzo, yeah. palazzo got a lot of money. We got a lot of money now. Um, so they're there for the wedding. I'm just getting, I'm, I'm getting so happy because Victoria deserves some happiness. I'm sorry. I get emotional talking about Victoria's yes, happiness. But, it, but here's the thing, though. We know that something's not adding up because what we found out a couple of days ago is that Ashlyn is really Bobby, and not Bobby from Brittany and right. Bobby. No, no, totally different. No, not Bobby from Greece. No, even though that was the time frame, though. So basically, to break it down, Ashlyn stole somebody's identity. Sounds right. familiar, doesn't it? And he wanted to be it because does. he was running away from 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 abuse. He was running away from family problems and. The fate, the the soap gods above was like, well, here's somebody you can take an identity from, but there's more to the story because we heard about cats. Go ahead, Anthony, sing the song for cats real quick. We got, we got, give, give us a little bit of of cats, a little bit of memory. That's all we got. That's all we can do. That's, 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 that's all we got. That's all we we can't afford Thank the God. whole thing. We just, yeah, we, we can't oh, afford yeah. the rights. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. We can't. So, but. But Billy is like, I'm going to snitch. I'm going to do all this. So basically, like I said, Billy is there. Ashlyn is there. Victoria, she's like, get Billy out of this. Like, you know, I don't want Billy around. But you know, Billy has to be there. Moving on to something else. So how do you make a name for yourself in the industry of fashion? By having the dress worn by somebody who is really important in the business. So, as we all know, it's my best part. Lauren, right, and Seth, okay. So we got uh, we got hashtag undercover wedding bra disaster dress part two. Y'all ever seen that movie on, if y'all remember ABC Family, there was this movie called the, the, called uh, Undercover Bridal Maid of Honor, stuff like that. Anyway, so Sally swapped the dresses. She did swap them. She did. Did Victoria see the other dress? No. Did she see both of them there? Or was 
No. Just mm. take it. No, Seth, no. She came in. She came in when Sally was swapping and then, like, ducked out. It was oh, a swap. Oh, boy. Right. But, yeah, must have been yeah. you know, but here's, but, but here's where my favorite part came in. Everybody, hold, hold hands. Summer and Kyle came back. And this is where I want to slap Young and Russell. How are you going to get rid of them? Okay, so, <laughs> you know, they came back. And, you know, here's the thing. I'm going to say this. If they can, I, I understand the stuff behind the scenes, and I understand, you know, Hunter King is going back to school and stuff like that. God bless you, girl. If they can do drop-ins, I would be cool with that. Because I felt as though for, for this, I like the fact that they were there for the family stuff. You, did, did anybody else, on the, do you know what I'm saying, like, Anthony and Dave, like, if we can just see them for, like, yeah, the yeah. important family stuff, I'm cool with that instead of just, like, completely not showing them or hearing from them ever again. Okay, so let me you know, let me preface this by saying it's a great way to reintroduce the new Noah, or to introduce the new Noah. Um, having said yes. that, do yeah. you remember, um, not long after I came on to the show, I mean, Candace, you and I came on basically at the same time. You had guest co-host a couple of times. Yeah. I had guest co-host. Right. But we had a very intense conversation um, after you and I both started early on in this, in, you know, in this adventure about how the soaps were moving towards this model where, you know, people yeah. were not going to come in on contract anymore. They were going to pop in for a couple of weeks here, a couple of months there, or even – you know, let's have them in for an arc of a story where they're there for yeah. even less than a week. Um, you know, and at that point, there was a lot of pushback from fans. You know, they didn't yep. want to, you know, they didn't, they didn't seem to enjoy seeing their favorites come in, breeze through, and pop out. Um, there was a lot of work that needed to be done from that point forward to leave a way of having, of having folks come in and go, you know, and, and honestly... Some some have worked, some have been horrifically bad. You know, I you know not to name any names or anything. Lisa Rena, Lisa Rena, Billy, Billy, no. Billy, Days of Our Life. Um, you know, but uh-huh. I'm not going to name any names of ones that didn't right. work very well. But this is exactly what we were talking about back then, and so you know, I absolutely love that we got the period, the exclamation point, and the dot, 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 what they call an ellipsis, because you know we're going to see Hunter and, um, oh, God, what's his name in real life? Michael. Um, Michael. 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 Thank you. Michael. You, you, yeah. you, you know we're going to see them again. But they got their happy ending, and, and since it's soaps, I'm going to put my air quotes, my two fingers on each hand, for now. Right. Mm-hmm. But let them, right. let them leave now. their happy ending off, off canvas, which gives more money to the right. show to, to bring in folks that we may not, you know, we may not see all the time, et cetera, or, you know, a character that will come in. It will give the show money to play with, and it also leaves the option for, you, you know, them to come and go. Um, are there others that should have been at this wedding that aren't there? Absolutely. Yeah. So yes. It's going to happen. You, you know, I mean, the mother of the bride on the sister show in CBS didn't make it to her own daughter's wedding. You know, so we're just going to yeah. have to live, we're going to have to live with the fact that, you know, Grandma Audrey, Three. General Hospital, she's still alive, but the portrayer God has left. retired. So we can talk right. about Grandma Audrey all we want, but without a recast, it's all it's going to be is talk. You know, the next right. time Elizabeth gets married, are we going to, we'll hear about Audrey. She'll be in the church. She'll be back no, around. No, 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 no. But no, we ain't never going to see no, her. No offense. We, we, no, no. I'm, I'm going to just say this right now. I love Rachel Ames. God bless. I know she's enjoying her retirement and everything. God bless, you know, Grandma Audrey. If Elizabeth ever, ever, ever gets married again, I'm going to need her brothers and sisters and oh, her parents to be there. Yes. And you know what? I don't know what um oh god, what's her name in real life? Rachel Corey. Um come on, Candace, well, oh, that's you your mean, girl. Victoria oh, oh, Wyndham. Uh, uh, Vic- Wyndham. Victoria Wyndham, thank you. Um I don't know what Victoria Wyndham is doing, but she would make a perfect Audrey for a very short story arc. I'm just gonna say this. I I, I heard that she's enjoying enjoying herself and um you never know where she might pop up at. 
But um, so back to the young and the restless. I'm sorry, but for those those folks out there that are complaining that this was a tease, it wasn't worth it, et cetera. Oh no, no, no. Oh no, no, no. We get a parenthesis on the happy ending, you know, and right. it leaves and we got shade. It, it leaves and a beautiful teeth in our mouths. Right. right. I mean, and, and here's the thing, you know, and I'll be the first one to say, you know, with Young and Russell, the show is called The Young and Russell, but you also brought up a point is that, okay, if you trade the young, uh, like a young couple out to get another younger person in, okay, but you also got to make sure it works. Um, the thing is, is that yes. I'm noticing something with Young and the Rustless that, that we're not seeing on the other I'm three. Afraid. Go ahead, girl. Go ahead. I, I noticed this is what, because, oh, God, y'all know I've been, like, really just irritated with younger Russell's. I'm not going to front. And there were certain story like the baby storyline. By the way, let me talk, drop, let, let, let me go to this real quick. So with the baby storyline, we got Mariah, you know, she, you know, owned up and saying that pretty much the only thing that kept her going through that traumatic experience was that baby, right? And anybody who has right. had a circuit or has, you know, or was a surrogate will understand it's the hardest thing. It's the hardest thing to let go of that child, even if you constantly put in your mindset that, okay, it's just, I'm just carrying it for this couple. I'm just carrying it for this couple. But you're carrying that child, a human being, for nine months. When they kick, they're kicking you. When you when you hold them, you, you're going to instantly connect. Mm-hmm. And I was I was just gonna say this to the young and the ruthless writers, I would like my check in the mail or you can Venmo it to me because some of the stuff that I said that I was waiting for this baby story because well yep. we all know this baby storyline was a mess. Considering the situations behind the situation of it all, behind the scenes. There was only three ways they could have done it. Um, I'm glad that they played on Mariah and Tessa. And let me explain why. I kept saying that if this baby storyline, they need Tessa's input. And I love the fact that Mariah, you know, considering she was going through a psychotic moment, not a breakdown, but a, like just a tra- – she was going through this A traumatic. This it was a post-traumatic she, stress. Yeah, it was a traumatic yeah. – right. And she was yeah. going through postpartum and everything like that. Like she moved – they moved out of the Chancellor house, which Abby didn't like and appreciate. But she needed a uh, – she needed to, quote, unquote – um have a moment, like a moment of clarity. And her moment of clarity was telling Tessa, hey, let's have a baby, <laughs> you know? And, and Tessa's yeah. like this, um, I love you, boo, but no. Like, because even She's Tessa, I think, right, and I love the fact that this baby storyline has showed us more of Kay Fairbanks. I love that girl. Um, I think she's definitely, like, they're showing us why Tessa it is a factor uh, on the show. She's an important character as well, um, especially because of Noah's returning. I picked that look. Yeah. I saw that Noah. Uh, let's not forget the history with that. Um, so yeah, I you know when she when Mariah was explaining, I think it's time for us to have a baby. I'm pretty sure everybody felt the same way, saying you cannot replace Bowie with a One. baby. And that's what she's trying to do. She was trying to replace that feeling of disappointment and void. Um, and okay. like Tessa said, no. And then mm-hmm. let me say this, real as you're saying this, I just have to. Okay. I don't know if it's a congratulations or a kudos, but I, I want to thank the Young and the Restless writing team for not having the you know the baby on the run storyline. You know, right. I'm, I can't part with this. I'm going to take this, you know, and we're going to draw this out for a couple of months. And eventually, you know, there's going to be a psychotic break in and, you know, the postpartum. Playing right. the beat in a more realistic way, I'm so glad that it happened. And, of course, uh-huh. it opens up that it opens up that conversation. You know, women that women that have had miscarriages, et cetera, et cetera, you know, uh-huh. they, they, they have these conversations. I don't want to feel Thank like you. I'm replacing. Well, no, you, you, you can't feel that way. But life goes on. We are, we're born life to die. On. We're born to live. Mm-hmm. You know, life goes on. So, you know, it's a very valid, it's a very valid conversation. I'm so, I'm so thrilled with the way they took this storyline. I hated the stitch part of it. It, it was a, a, oh, a yeah. waste that was, of that. Was, of that. Yeah. 
it was a waste of that man's talent. That was a, a waste little of, yeah. of that character. That was that um, to me that came out of left field with with all of that was going on because I felt as though, but it, it, and here's the, okay, here's the re- re- reality of it all. Young and Russell, you're going to need to recast Chance. Yeah, I, thank you. It's Definitely either nice. two ways go with this because, and I was, you know, I had this conversation with some friends is that, okay, let's think about Chance's, you know, DNA of father figures, right? The fact that Ryan, you know, was his father figure, but his real father, you know, left, quote, unquote, died and kind of like kid from, you know, him growing up. The thing is, is that you are character assassinating Chance. And again, for those who remember, and I'm just going to put John Driscoll's Chance because you remember when John Mm -hmm. played him, Chance wanted to be a father. He was more of a father figure to Delia than Billy. And I said what I said. Um, So this is is coming out of left field. So it's like, okay, it's either two things you can do. One, I, I saw a lot of people saying it, is kill the character off. Let me tell you right now, that's going to be the hard, that's going to, that's going to be a slap in the face. Because considering the fact, Chance is a Chancellor. And if you do that, that's another Chancellor gone, okay? You recast mm-hmm. the role. Let's just say, like, if you're having, and Young and Russell, if you're having a hard time recasting the role, I'm going to give you an out. I'm going to give you a, this option. If this happens, I want my money. You can have either Cricket, Ronan, because Jeff Francis has been doing a lot lately, comes back to town and says that Chance is MIA, missing in action from his, his assignment, or he's been taken captive, or some, something has happened to him where they can't reach him. When you do do a recast down the line, and so far you're playing the beat right now doing it with Devon, Devon wanted to be nothing more but the fun-loving uncle and everything. I said on this show and on social media, I kept saying, that's not going to fly, considering Devon's upbringing, who he was surrounded by, and the fact oh, that he honey. lost his first Honey, honey, don't you see the writing on the wall? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, this, this is what I'm yeah. saying. When the baby storyline was happening, right, I got irritated because I was like, Devon would not do, like, give up his parental rights. I love the fact that they, like I said, they're doing the storylines now that should have already been in a Uh trust. It should have been addressed, like, the fact that he talked to Lily. Lily, and I kept saying this, Lily would have been perfect to talk to because she did use a surrogate. Now, uh-huh. when she was when she was pregnant with yeah. those twins, not only that, but Mariah could talk to Sharon about you know pregnancy. Like there were certain people that needed to be like kind of the supporters in this. Lily, right. Sharon, yeah. when she wasn't thirsting after Adam, and even Ashley. And that's what I'm saying. Like now, okay, now we have the situation of thankfully you didn't make Mariah go into the Annie Dutton situation where she was loco loco, okay? Glad to yeah, didn't I'm, do that. I'm glad but too. I'm but I'm glad too that we also got the legal situation because the man even told Devon. I told you. Like what she did. She didn't tell him. The fact that you got Devon and Abby All right folks. Meh. Okay, so girl <laughs> here's here's yeah. where I see it going. There's going to be the potential for a custody battle. And Devon is going oh, yeah. to choose which, which side he's going to play on. Now, don't, forget, yep. don't forget, there's, there's a heck of a lot of, of um, uh, history and, 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 and feeling between Devon and Mariah as well as Devon and Abby. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. you, and I both, you right. and I both feel, I think, as I say this, Candace, that, you know, Devon's loyalties are going are gonna to play in the Abby camp. But they're going to oh, yeah. play in the Abby camp. Because those feelings are going to resurface again, um, mm-hmm. but 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 it's going to be it's going to be a a torn. He doesn't want to hurt Mariah. He doesn't want Abby right. to hurt Mariah. Mariah doesn't, wanna, doesn't want to, um, Abby doesn't right. want to hurt Mariah. But in the end, you got to do what you got to do as a parent to make sure your child, you know, your child is with you. Um, That's they, why I said like so, if any, yeah, go ahead. I think that they should they should recast recast Chance 
with somebody like Kyle Loder and bring him back mm. onto the canvas, mm. uh, you know, and go back to the, the um, go back to the chance, like you were saying before, um, you know, that we knew a few years ago. Not disrespect all that's happened since then, but find a way to write the character back into the canvas where, you know, he's coming off of something extremely, you know, emotional. He's been kidnapped. He's yeah, been, like a post-traumatic, you, like, yeah, post-traumatic Exactly. Yeah. Like, and you can now, have him do that, right. You know, bring Joe back and, a little bit. You know, there, there's so much story that could be told bringing him back to the canvas wounded, but also needing that family base, including the child. Right. At because the same can you time, imagine... Wait, wait, right. hold up. Let me just finish this sentence. At the mm-hmm. same time, Abby having compassion, you, you know, for how he's feeling and also feeling mm-hmm. the sparks that she's always felt with Devon and still being stuck in where she's in right now. So it would be a three-way, like, extravaganza across the canvas. Right. Of course, anything that brings Jill back makes me happy. Oh, yeah. And that's another thing, too, is that, you know, yeah. you really think about it. This story will definitely have, obviously, the Newmans, the Chancellors, and the Abbots into it. But the biggest thing is I would love to see, and I'm glad Devon said it, for some people who did not hear it, technically, Devon and Chance are cousins. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. That's another thing, too, is that it would, like, can you imagine if they the role of Chance is now being played by whoever, and Chance is you know seeing this connection between Devon, Abby, and the baby, as well as Devon and the baby. Like add that, one more, add, add one more piece onto that. Jill starts seeing it as well. Right, but you, I think it would be know, more. So, it would be more so like the effect of the fact that Chance and Abby. Who, but I'm think I'm thinking globally. You, Jill go Jill and and Victor going at it again as well. Well, you also got put Jack oh in Lord. it. You got put yeah. Jack, you got put Jack and Ash, and Ashley into it. I think that's Jack, why I said like. I think Jack would be secondary. It's going like to be a in a lot of those baby. situations. It's going to be a free for all, absolutely. But you know what? We haven't seen I, a good yes. Jill Victor Newman showdown in it's got to be in a eight, while. ten years now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so playing those beats and don't forget, Jill's got a heart for Abby. So it's going to be hard. Oh, yeah. It would be hard for her too to, to, to draw those battle lines. It's um, going to be know, interesting because what, yeah, all the history with Victor and chance, it would be hard to draw those battle lines too, because don't forget there's secrets and skeletons in those closets. But don't, don't, so, but don't also forget, you forgot yeah. something else. You forgot a real big one. Victor's loyalty to Devon. Victor's loyalty to Devon because of Neil. Wow, the Neil yeah, factor yeah. plays. Exactly. The Neil factor plays big in in this too because again it's sort of like, you know, that's Neil's that's Neil's technically grandchild. you know, Bob, you, it's just this is. If young okay, Russell so let me let me beat, answer two of you. Would you not uh, love yeah. the scene where Lily just? literally either throws a drink or slaps Abby's face and says, I- I- hello, you've wanted Devon for years. What is wrong with you? Tell me you <laughs> wouldn't just die to see that scene. I've been... I would... That would, uh, you know, that would be something to see, huh. yeah. I would just like to say Everybody knows, knows it. <laughs> Everybody knows well, it. Like nobody's well, ever spoken Here's yeah. the thing, though. I this is kind of why I wish they did not ruin Stitch, because I could also yeah. see Stitch. Like if they would have went there, okay. I'm just gonna say this: if Abby and Chance wasn't like legit or and everything, and Stitch came back, he made a play for Abby. Stitch realizes that Abby, you know, like I don't know how they could have done it. But it would have ended up where Abby was questioning her feelings for a lot of people. And, like, with Devon, I'm sorry. I'm going to say this is nothing against the actress. Let me just say this. I'm not feeling Amanda and Devon. 
I'm not. I tried. I was trying, Neither am I. and I, I couldn't do Neither it am I. because I feel as though they dropped Amanda's character and the storyline because I didn't care about who Daddy was anyway. But I feel as though there there could be a lot of mess behind if they do a what custody battle. Done with that is, what they could have done with that is she started to develop. She started to redevelop feelings for Stitch. She's always going to feel the way that she feels about Chance. Every, now, added with the postpartum depression and everything she's going through with Mariah, Devon, take me away. You're my best friend. Not I have any feelings for you or you have any feelings for me. Right. Take me away from all this. And while they're gone, that elephant resurfaces, and the trunk actually gets planted where the trunk should have been planted six years ago. But, okay. you know, and then by the, time, by the time everybody finds out, now she's got the feeling she feels for Chance, the feeling she feels for Stitch, and this new budding, you know, what's been simmering for seven, eight years underneath it all with Devon. That would have been that, that would that would have been a year long well, storyline that they could play. And not only that, but you know, again, Abby is very overwhelmed right now, clearly. And that's why I said you either recast the role of Chance or just say for right now until they figure everything out because clearly they are going to try to do a, a Abby and Devon situation have him be MIA um, because it, it's like that is probably the only like dark cloud in the storyline other than that they're playing they're playing the beat and I I actually enjoy it um, right now Young and the Restless seems to be kind of getting their act together kind of I can say all the way but kinda, I'm now, yeah, yeah kind of, but there, but there's certain things that I'm really need to be like, it, like I'm enjoying because there's certain flows happening. Like, like the fact that we do have, you know, there's that corporate is that corporate business stuff that's happening. You have chance comms reputation on the line. <laughs> Thanks, Billy. You got Ashlyn. We don't know. We don't know certain things. We got, you know what else? I'm going to say this. Anytime I see Janice, the OG from Young and the Rossless, because a lot of y'all think that was started out with the Newmans and the Abbots. It did. But to see her, it didn't. even though, but I'm going to be honest, I was kind of disappointed, though, because I really I wish really they would have had Ashlyn. You know what I'm about yeah. to say. I really yeah. wish they yeah. would have said that Ashlyn was the long-lost brother. Yeah, and this would have Allegedly. tied in yeah. so perfectly, where yeah. Janice was the you one that it. kept the secret, right? Yeah. And that would have tied into Theo. Hi, Tyler Johnson. That we or we get like a um, yep. See, we get a we get a we get a Cyrus and everything. Um, that yeah, you know they, they could have tied that in, but for right now, like Young is sort of getting back on their feet. It's going to depend for the next couple of weeks where they go. Because right now, like unlike another show, um, <clears throat> their their wedding seems to be like the stuff surrounding the wedding is a little interesting. Seeing you know, like you said, new Noah, you know, interact. I think he did a great job uh, so far. Um, seeing I, Summer and Kyle, so seeing the Newman, seeing Victoria. Think. Yeah, so from far. What I'm told, I mean, we will. Those looks. Yeah. Those looks from Noah towards um, uh, Tessa. Tessa. Oh my God! Yep. Now everybody That's knows I lost I lost my eyesight. I, if I use magnification and stop everything and use it, I can't get it. So I I rely on my sister to uh, girl. Go go! I'm gonna I'm, fast forward, fast forward. No no stop there stop there. Okay now I need you to t- and and I make her do this. I need you to tell me moment for moment what is happening here because there's a montage whatever whatever whatever. Right. All I all I have been told is those looks. With Noah towards Tessa, say everything. Oh yeah, they still got to resolve. They got to resolve a lot of history because I think that's another thing too, is that there's some things that was that was not resolved the first go around. Um, so that's why I'm gonna say I'm gonna save my official Young and the Russell's grade until later. Because I want I'm, to see... I'm going to save my grade till later, but I'm going to say that it's yeah. a good portent that unlike yeah. what the Young and the Restless has done with other characters, completely ignoring the history where the character was when they left versus where they are when right. they came back. Adam, back. Adam. 
oh, oh, did I say that mm-hmm. out loud? I didn't mean to. I didn't want to say a name out loud. Um, this time they seem oh, to be oh, playing Adam? the beat. Yeah, 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 that one. Um, they seem to be playing the oh, beat where us, the, as the viewers, you know, were left off. Because I gotta be mm-hmm. honest, if they pretended like there was nothing ever between Noah and and Tessa, I, I'd be kind of pissed off mm-hmm. right now. So, all right, but you know what? We need to take the red eye out to Los Angeles and get to get right. to get to the boat, get to get to get to the boats and the beautiful. Candace opened us huh. up with the Young and the Restless. David, why don't you open us up with where we are right now with the boat and the beautiful? Well, Deacon has arrived as of last week, and he's still trying to make his rounds. He made his plea to hope how much he loves her and all that, and Liam was coming in um, with his so-called muscle telling him to get the heck out of the office. She doesn't want to be here anymore, and she wants to stand. And she wants to stand for herself. Okay, that 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 was that was a cute little recap on on one of the things. What what else is going on, David? <clears throat> yeah, um, stuff going on. We got Sheila. We got Sheila who uh, has met up with Deacon and. That she wants to join forces with him to bring the foresters down, and they she thinks that they that they can help each other out. On the other hand, we got we got Quinn and Eric, um, who's got basically an open marriage, and none of the family can accept it, and. Everyone else wants to put in their two cents. And uh, Quinn says it's nobody else's business but theirs. All right. So I really want to hear what Candace has to say about everything that's going on on the Bulls and the Beautiful right now. Uh, But I'm going to say one thing first. I take back everything I said last week as far as the Quinn, Eric, Carter, you know, I like the story that they're telling today. I don't know two weeks from now when we reconvene with Take to Radio, I'm going to feel the same way. But I like that part of the story. Candace, take it away because I have a feeling that you have just a ma- just the same amount of, 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 of what's, what's, you, you know, <clears throat> what needs to be picked at with Bold and Beautiful as I do. Go ahead, girl. Okay, so let me get my crown together because I hey, feel hey, like I'm going to be – Candace right now is like a Corvette up on those blocks that they put them on, and the engine <laughs> – the engine <laughs> – And the wheels are spinning. Rrr, and Candace is like, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. I need to okay, get on the road. I'm going to start – I'm going to start. I'm like, I'm like hard castle in the corner. Here we go. Um, The thing is, is that bold – look. I'm just going to say, a lot of people say Bold and Beautiful is messy. And guess what? It's supposed to be. Like, I'm just going to be, you know, everybody complains. Everybody compares it to Young and to GH and to Days. And I'm like, at this point, to me, I look at it as a prime time series. And those who follow me, y'all know where I stand at with that. All right, so I'm going to break this down. Quinn, Eric, and Carter, the most controversial storyline. And I say it like that because, again, it is open marriage. A, and here's the thing. Here's, here's how Wait, Candace, one, Candace, let's, well, let's, let's identify the elephant in the room, though. Not only is it an open marriage, but she's getting her swirl on. You know, it's that vanilla chocolate ice cream swirl. I'm done with you. Yeah. Here, here's, here's the uh-huh. thing. Okay, let me just say this now. If John McCook is not submitted for... Outstanding supporting actor or even lead actor, I'm going to be crying. I'm going to be screaming, to be honest. Right. Um, yeah. Here's the thing. I, I think this is this is a bold and beautiful trait is they do a storyline that gets us fans all wound up. People are like, oh, my God, this is, oh, what is he thinking of and all this stuff. But when they peel it back and you start seeing each character's point of view, you start to kind of look at the storyline a little differently. Here's the thing. Yeah. Eric is lonely. Be- 
Wait, Eric is yeah, wrong. Exactly. No, Candace, wait. Because that's a very yeah. important point. Because at that point, and, and um, you go through what everybody's feeling, but there's a mm-hmm. place in this storyline for 90% of the population out there to put themselves, they're Eric, they're Quinn, they're Carter, they're Ridge, mm-hmm. they're Brooke, they're Steffi. There's a place for everybody out there to fit themselves into the storyline. That's why I'm not happy with where it is today, but right. I'm happy that they're telling the story. And I, I, every single person who's watching this can find a place where they identify. Continue. Go ahead. You were saying where because, Eric is. Because where Eric is is that he's – I said this. I did say this on a lot of, of social media. Eric Forster and Jack Abbott are in the same boat for different waters. Here's exactly. the thing. Both of these men right. – have been used to the families laughing, living in the house. Every time you come home from work, it's always the family. Now it's empty. It's lonely. And they're not used to that. Now, with Eric, you know. That's my question. (laughs) With Eric, here's the thing. He's always been sexually active. My God, take a look at his record, okay? And the thing is that, you know, how he didn't end up with chlamydia. Right? Go ahead. ahead. (laughs) But here's the thing, though. Like, you know, it it was a moment that he said, you know, first and foremost, I got offended with everybody saying, you know, when when everybody found out the condition that Eric was in. I was like, first of all, there's none of y'all GD business, okay, of what the situation is. It's a personal matter. Y'all can believe whatever you want. And, again, Ridgebrook, well, I understand everybody says Quinn is the baddie based off of history. But, again, Ridge, you need to go to that mirror and look at what you did mm, one, two, three, four, almost five years ago when you had your tongue down Quinn's throat. Okay? I'm just uh-huh. like, Rick, bro, mm-hmm. girl, I love you, but sometimes you need to take a step back, too, because y'all both want a hypocrite, hypocritical lane. Okay. With Eric. That scene, I think it's, what, two weeks ago now, when he was talking to Rich. I, I believe. And said, yeah, and he was saying all of this, and even the scenes when he said that he still loved Quint, and he takes ownership of the fact that he did make her feel second place because of his commitment to Brooke. I'm going to just say this again. You don't understand the situation until they tell you the situation. At the end of the day, I always say this. How desperate are you to keep family and friends around? What would you be willing to do to keep your family and friends around just so you won't feel lonely? Bingo, right there. Okay, wait, the Candace, that- let me stop you right there for a second because okay. I want to add okay. this layer to it. Steffi, uh, yep, Stephanie, ahead. love of his mm-hmm. life, okay? He mm-hmm. slept with Brooke. <laughs> he had mm-hmm. the almost dalliance yep. with Kayla. Sheila, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Everybody has left Eric for somebody else yep. most else. of the time for one of his sons. So uh, as much as yep. they're not going to actually say this on the air, they're playing the beat also of what doesn't Eric have that his sons have that other men have had. Why is it that he can't keep a woman interested all the way? Right. That is fine. They're not, yep. Down, uh, I'm knocking right now because I believe Bowles is going there. Guaranteed, in I want to say the end of November sweeps, we're going to hear that too. Everybody has oh, left yeah. me for one of my sons. It's not only, well, you not- know, he's older and it, 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 it don't get up every morning the way it used to. You know, as a, as, <laughs> as, as a very healthy man, I can tell you, I wake up every morning and it's like, hello, hello, is there anything to do with this thing? Um, I, but I as you get older, that. that changes. But right. they're gonna they're gonna play that beat. But everybody and it does has something left Eric to go somewhere else. And it does something. And yes, I'm, it does I'm just it. saying, I, cause, you know, it does do stuff to guys' self esteem because, like you just said, you know, it, a, yeah, it's it sort of, it's sort of like you know, if some, you know, I'm just gonna say, you know, this is National Cancer Awareness Month. Please pe- make sure you check yourself, you know, breast cancer, any kind of cancer. I'm just gonna say it like that. But it's sort of like, and it reminds when I'm about to say it reminds me of the scene with Monica 
has showed Alan her her non breast. Yeah. You know when she has and said, "Does this does this look sexy?" When you have something that is that yeah. makes you a sexual human being taken away from you, it makes you feel less of a person. So to me, I'm just it like, does. okay, I get what Eric is saying because again, like you just said, you name all the women: Donna, uh, Beth, Brooke. Daphne, Quinn, you know, all these people that he's had, you know, you know, romantic stuff with, and he can't, he can't give them that happiness, you know. If you go back to when this story first started, Quinn has said, you know, she felt, she felt free because she didn't have to keep up with Eric because everybody was against her and Eric, right? So with her and Quinn, it made more sense. There was more of a chance. Then a chance with Eric and Gwen. But but here's the deal. You know, Eric gave her something that no man could ever give her. And that was seeing her for who she is and wanting to believe that the parts of her that are good. And they're they're in there. They you can't have somebody there's nobody in this world that's completely evil or completely good. There's always gonna be Mm -hmm. that way. So he saw her for the good, he saw her for the bad, he saw her for the ugly. Unfortunately, now that he fulfills her in all of those ways, the sex part of it just isn't hitting it all the way. Right. Exactly. That's a fact of the matter Mm -hmm. that happens across the world, not even across this Mm -hmm. country. This person can give me, they make me, how many times do you hear people say, he or she makes me laugh, I just wish they made me, you know, laugh, Right. speak. Right. You you know what I mean? They give me everything that I need, except when we get to the bedroom, instead of being bow, chicka, bow, bow, it's dum, dum, da, da. Yeah. You know, and and if this, if only the rock and roll in the bedroom matched everything else that they're giving me, it's everything. It would be everything. But, But no soap, as far as I can remember, has ever tackled you give me everything except what I need in bed or on the floor or on the, the washing machine or right. you know, in the jacuzzi or and, all the other places and, you can do it. And and let me address this, address this too because I, I know some people were saying this. It's like, okay, has he gone to the doctors and stuff? Off screen they probably have talked about it, you know. And I know people was like, oh, my God, Katie. Because him and Katie had scenes. And I was like, okay, no offense, but Katie is the daughter figure for him. I said, here's, here's the crazy part. It's, they will never go there with Eric and Katie. I don't care what anybody says. To me, they will never go there. I just, Candace, this is an interesting. If they go there, Katie is the daughter to Eric that he never actually got to raise. I know this Felicia. There you go. Wrong. Katie right, is I know the what daughter you meant. he never got to raise. And, yeah. and with Katie, well, what was it? What was that? What was the other girl? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the daughter's name? What was it? Angie, Angela, Angela. Go back. Let's go back. We got to go back. What was the oh, daughter's boy. name? Yeah, that was. See, by the way, you can you can watch season one of Born and Beautiful right now on YouTube. Um, same with Squad, and on right? Amazon Prime, by the way. There's like three. That's four, right. But, the one that but, was in the yeah. hospital. Yeah, yeah, the one that was in the one that, the one that sold yeah. that sold the money up. But that's what that's what we're saying is like, and I hope they do go. To, I want them. To, look, this is, might be John McCook. Let me real one here. We're trying to help y'all out, bro. Beautiful. Have it where Eric says that because here's another factor: the holidays are coming up, and you can have a scene where Eric is up top the stairs and he's looking at the grandkids. He's looking at you know the his sons and stuff like that and all, all this all this thing and he and then after a while like have him still stand there kind of fast forward a little bit you know like you know show everybody leaving one by one by one by one and then you know he turns and he sees Quinn and Quinn and Carter right and that's when you can have that moment where Eric is talking to a picture of Stephanie a picture of the whole family, like when they all have like a family portrait and saying one by one, everybody has left me. I don't, and like just have that, just go there with that emotion. Candace, I'm going to, I'm going to tweak what you just said. Have, have that, have exactly what you just said, 
But instead of having it, the family or anything else, have have that everybody leave. Do that montage where everybody's hugging and kissing, et cetera, et cetera. And then everybody leaves. Quinn goes, she says, baby, I'm going to go upstairs, whatever. You know, she goes and makes a secret phone call to Carter. And then he turns to Stephanie's portrait and he says, what, what am I, what am I missing? I've got everything else. I, I'm emotionally, I'm always emotionally there. I'm a great father. I'm right. a great grandfather. I'm a best, I'm a great friend. Right. What am I missing? What is it that I can't keep a woman in my bed? In, in let, let be the first show. Be the be the show that does it. Why can't I keep a woman in my bed? They want me as a friend. They want me as a father figure. They want me as a grandfather. They want me as everything else, but a, but a, a vital sexual human. And you being. can even say, and you can even say, like to stuff, like there could be a scene where he also says, "Is this your sick twist of fate?" Like kind of because all the times that he's done stuff to Stephanie, because Stephanie really never stepped out on him. So it's like he can say, "Is this your way of from the great beyond? Is a twist of fate, like you know, to make it funny that I can't, you know, I have everything." And then go into that monologue. It's like I've had, to, I've had everything. And then yeah. he was like, "Is it because you know I did this?" Like have him start having that moment where he's like trying to yes. figure out where did this yes. all happen? You know, he was like, "Was it because you know I took the trust?" And I didn't tell you, it, you know, your father, you know, was it because I, I slept with Brooke? And, you know, like, oh. let's go there with that where he, because now it's like, okay, it could be obviously like, and you know how some people will say when they get sick, you know, they always go there. They're like, well, I did everything I was supposed to do. How come I'm sick? Uh-huh. Like, uh-huh. like, or, you know, how come this age, like, start questioning your faith. Like, start questioning the situation. Right. Like, is it because I did this? Was I too nice to this person that always, you know, do this? You can go there with that. You don't have to, like, make and, – and here's the thing. Bo, look. Hmm. Don't have him have this conversation with Brooke. I'm going to tell you no. why. No, no. Because have Brooke is the epitome no. of the monologue with Stephanie. Right. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, and, and I like, wait, Brooke, and I like Brooke. And both okay. are beautiful. If you can get Susan Flannery to answer him, to come for you know two cute days of work and answer him through the portrait, great. But otherwise, then have it be a monologue between himself and Stephanie's portrait. Nobody on canvas can give the resolution nope. to this com- to that conversation. It's either him alone or can. him and the ghost of Stephanie. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They need to do that because right now you cannot have any, you cannot have Ridge because Ridge, you earth the heck out. I'm going to be honest. I understand as a son, you're trying to protect your father, but at the same time as a man, because you also got. You're not recognizing your father is still a man. Your father is right. still and a man. Right, and not only that, you man. still feel as though, you yeah. feel as though this is also a nan nan a boo boo. And I also said this to Ridge, no offense. You may be a forester by name. You're a Maloney, a, a, a Maroney by blood. By blood. Uh-huh. But you Thank are a you. true, but you also a true Logan right now. Because here's the thing. The Logan women is, they have no room to talk. They have no room to talk about certain things. Katie, you have no room to talk about any kind of relationship, considering your history. Brooke, I love you. To, I love you and everything. And I understand, okay. but y'all are trying Donna really has hard. A little bit of room to talk. She has. I, I okay. gotta give. I gotta wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll give her. I'll give her a half of a doorway in. Because okay. The, okay. Because look, I'm looking at her track record too. Donna. Okay. All right, Bo. Okay, Bo. 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 We're gonna have a come to Jesus moment right now. I understand what you're trying to do with Donna. Because, again, if you've been watching both, well, here's the thing. I don't. Okay. If anybody remembers, see, this is where it gets messy and a little confusing. If anybody remembers when Stephanie was dying, okay, she did request certain things from two Logan women. One yes. is Brooke, okay. who people wa- I watched over the Forrester family. She, you know, and I always say this, Stephanie's traits 
has gone to Brooke and to Taylor. We all know Taylor ain't on, so Brooke is now, they're trying to make her too much like Brooke. I mean, Brooke, like Stephanie. But that's, I'm going to tell you right now, that's not working for me, okay? The second person no, because she's was got too Donna. Much. Well, she got to, it's like you forgetting where you're coming from, Brooke. It's like, do you not remember right. you used to okay. be Wait, the host? I'm, I'm you used to be a, the I'm going to put a pause in there for a second. Because honestly, we're we're both really, really, and I'm going to use the F word instead of the actual word, is Stephanie left nothing for Pam. That should have been Pam's role. Pam's role should have, yeah. You know, Pam's role should have been. I totally thought, I always thought Pam and Eric would hook up. I'm going to be honest. I did. I thought if I yeah, was going to get too. Pam and Charlie's wedding, I would get Pam and Eric. Like, the fact of, like, you know, Pam felt as though it was her duty to watch. And, I mean, here's the thing. Pam did, does do that. Pam is still looking after the family, but also at the same time, she's looking out for herself. The other person that was said was Donna. Stephanie didn't want to, uh-huh. but she, was, she acknowledged the fact that Donna had feelings for Eric. And did say for her to also look after Eric. I feel as though they are kind of like opening that can of worms again, where Don is like, okay, I can't stand Quinn. We all can't stand Quinn, but but I still care for him. And the thing is, Don has never stopped caring about Eric. That's a, I think even though we haven't seen Jennifer as Don in a very long time, we still have to acknowledge. Donna didn't care about that man. But honey, so I'm curious. To the, yeah, it goes back to the same story through line. Everybody right. loves Eric. Everybody cares about Eric, but nobody wants to actually make the day to day commitment to stay with Eric. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's interesting, yeah, like I said, with who... this storyline. But but look, I'm still heated up. I gotta I gotta go to the next part of this of this show. All right. Woo. Go ahead, girl. I've been let waiting. Me, I me, have been waiting. Me. All right. So, Paris. I see Paris. I see London. I see Paris and on the where I got. I don't know. Here's the thing. Yeah. Thomas. Thomas. Thomas does have a quick obsession trait. He gets very hung yeah. up on something and immediately is kind of overthinking and obsessing about it. Let me tell you what happened. So first and foremost, okay, Bo, you've done this two times. The first time I enjoyed it, Paris was singing at the Dodge Stadium game. Her, her and Zenday went, went to the Dodge game. It was cute. I've seen it before, though, with Rick and Maya. Now, I don't know if, if the Bell family has uh, a percentage or ownership of the Dodge, the Dodgers, but I was just like, like everybody else, I was like, wait, isn't this the third time? Because I thought Nicole, but Nicole wasn't there. She was there with mine. Okay, with that being said, hmm. I thought they were going to go with Sin and Perth. I'll save that judge call for a later day. But then I'm seeing like you know Stephanie Stephanie talking to Thomas you know you know Thomas is like kind of like starstruck like he's in awe like he's been hit with the arrow of love and Stephanie is talking her up and he's like yeah she's wonderful I've never noticed this before I'm and I'm sitting here I'm just like oh wait oh oh oh, oh okay you know again didn't see this one coming. And then, so, you know, when they're talking and I'm, he's putting on the, the flirtation of it all, and she flirtation, too, without her knowing it. And I'm like, okay, so today, on today's show, for those who don't know, they're, they're, they're living together. Yeah. Because apparently people don't got money. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. When I tell you, let me just say this. <sighs> okay. Because a lot of people say, like, okay, Thomas is dating. Right. Everybody was asking this question. Thomas's dating life. Yes, has been very colorful. Yes, it has. Starting with his first wife, who was Latina. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. And yeah, he he down with the world too. Because Zoe, remember Zoe? Remember Zoe? Y'all remember Zoe? I think yeah, we remember Zoe. Oh, we remember the we remember hey, the, poor little, the poor little one that went off the cliff in the car. 
And girl, none of us no, are gonna forget not Emma, the berry. Not Emma. No, that was Emma. That's that was Emma. Emma. We don't talk about Emma. We don't talk about Emma. We talk about Zozo. You know the one that I was mad that they didn't make until a Kimberly from Merrill's place and blew up Force of Creations? That yes. girl. Zoe, yeah. Paris's sister. But also yeah, Zoe. I, because I, mean, I have to invoke this as many times as I possibly can. The island, the berries, and Brooke. I just have to throw that in there. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. We don't talk I, about girl, that. Girl, I know, I know we're not supposed to talk about that, but I'm we're the not one supposed that's to talk bring about up that. Just <laughs> like, just like, just like we don't talk about the fact that you know, once upon a time on a show called God Light, people went through Reva's boobs. <laughs> girl, I love you. I love you. We're okay. not supposed to talk Real, about that. Real or, quick. Oh, we're not supposed he, he, to talk about that on Days of Our Lives. There was a, there was an elephant. Mm-hmm. Girl, on Days of Their Life, there was a chimpanzee. But, you know, we're not supposed to talk about that either. We're not um, talking about no, that on Another World. Seriously, though, on on, on yeah. Bold and the Beautiful, he, he, here's the deal. Yeah. And I say here's the deal a lot. Here's the deal. Thomas is not going anywhere unless you kill him no. off and, no. you know, and you decapitate him and you bury the head in one cemetery and the body in another cemetery. Thomas isn't going anywhere. And you don't so want to do that. Time, and you don't want to do that. It's time for both and the beautiful to recognize that this brokenness that is Thomas needs something to bridge him to the other side. Right now he's a character. I'm available. He's oh. not a character. Oh, girl, I-, I would love to see you lip lock in with some Thomas. Um. <laughs> And let me tell you, Mr. Bill and uh, Mr. Brad, uh, Mr. Bradley, if anybody could make it believable, it's this girl right here, Miss Candace. <laughs> so, bring her on as a not even as a not even as a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Oh God. Bring her on as a life coach to help him. Could you imagine? You know, wait. Wait, can you imagine if we could, if, if there was a way to bring Danielle for, for forever and a day onto Bold and Beautiful? Oh, for those my who know, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. But, no, but <laughs> seriously, getting, getting back to actual seriousness, yeah. we're done. Yeah. We're done with, Ken, with Thomas being the pendulum slipping, you know, swinging back and forth. We need some movement. They need for to do Thomas. something with him. Yes. They need, they need some movement for Thomas himself. And they also need to bring back the relationship between him and his son. Because that's still hanging right. in the balance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Right now, I just feel as though they don't know. They really do not know what to do they with really Thomas. They really don't know what to do with him. And no, they really it's kind of like, I mean, yeah, you're going to have to move away from hope. Because of Paris, that's what I'm assuming. But there has to be more to the story than just that. Um, so I'm just gonna oh, say, like, honey, just go ahead. Can, can, yeah. Wait, can the three of us? Can the three of us agree that there is a huge opportunity lost? Sheila should have targeted Thomas. Thomas, I, come on, mm-hmm. tell me I'm not. Just, Maybe that's still me, to that's, come. Oh, no. no, because here's the thing. Okay, Could that be it's still to come. I don't think so. Okay, let me but let me both, let me speed it up shock real up. quick. But go ahead, Candace. Yeah, let me hit to the now we're entering the Sheila zone. Make sure you wear your safe belts and everything. Here's the thing about Bowen again. Girl, they put brought the Sheila on. on. You need the goggles on. Yeah, put the goggles on. on. Put, the, put the whole oh. safety thing because I'm not getting in trouble for this. The thing is, is that yeah. you brought Sheila on. Now, for me, I was happy because, okay, I, I was like, ooh, Sheila's coming back. The thing is, too, is that when Sheila yeah. came back, I had I did have a high expectations. I will probably admit to that. And, yes, yeah, some of it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. However, I did like the twist that she was Finn's mother because I was like, oh, shoot, this is the force's worst nightmare ever to come true, especially Stacey. And I saw a lot of people saying, why Stephanie? Why Stephanie? Why not? Sheila, in her why mind, not? Why not? is it still gunning it over. Has to be. Right. It's, yes. still, it's still gunning after the Forsters for everything the Forsters, quote, unquote, did to Sheila, starting with the queen herself. 
the thing is, is that Safi has a very interesting situation because for three years her mother was gone because of that woman. Okay, again, go on YouTube to see the shooting. Everybody in her family, mm-hmm. in Steffi's family, has been targeted, threatened, and stuff by Sheila. Again, Thomas, as a baby, Ridge, Brooke, um, her grandparents, you know, everybody has been targeted by this woman. So she has, every time she sees Sheila, it's a traumatic effect. Can you imagine now her being the mother-in-law? And not only that, but the grandmother to your baby. All right. Mm-hmm. That being said, here comes Deacon. All right. Yep. Now, 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 we, now, we, now, we, now we're playing. Now we're playing. Okay. You did have to do something with Liam and Hope. By the way, Anika, we're sending you our love, too. If you do not understand why I said that, go to her Instagram page, click on the link yes. in her bio, and it explains everything. And Anika, I'm the fact that say, you played the storyline that you played, after yes. everything that you've been through, girl, I bow. Yeah. I yeah, kissed the feet. Yeah. I kissed the, the pedicure. I kissed the corn that might be on the third toe from the left. Uh, okay. Girl, I bow. I, 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 yeah, because I, you have, when you I have say respect, that. You have my yeah. respect, girl. And And yeah. like I said, I related to that. I get it. I understand. And like I said, you you did a service to a lot of women who are afraid to say that. So I give Thank you kudos. You. And, yes. Glam, and, and Glamour Magazine, I got to give you props, too, because it's not too often that a soap actress would get to pen an article in your magazine. So I do thank you for that as well, especially this month alone. Um, with that being said, you did need to do something with Liam and Hope because they kind of been on the back burner. The fact that Hope has been writing to Deacon all this time, I was like, yes! I was like, yes, 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 yes. And yeah, yeah Liam, who girl, are you? Girl, you I'm and like, I are Liam. always, we're always on the same yes. page because I said to myself, yes, yes, this is real storytelling. This right, because Cameron. anybody who knows, yes. she's been trying, like, ever since the last Liam yes, and Hope really. wedding, when Kimberly McTula yes. played the role, they've been trying to do a Deacon and Hope, like, relationship. Yes. The last time reunion. we saw anything the deal, yeah, like, not even a reunion, but just the fact that they tried to, like, Hope was trying to get to know her father. The last time we saw Hope and Deacon, technically, is when Deacon chose Quinn over Hope. So the fact that all of this has been going on behind closed doors, unknown to Liam and to Brooke. that followed Quinn keeping Liam in uh, memory limbo, let's call it. Yeah, Adam so and Eve. Could, yep, Adam and Eve. Yep, yep, yep. 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 So yep, to me, so it's like. It actually fits perfectly. Perfectly. Right. But, in but, the then on top of that, but then on top of that, you have Deacon, who, again, the Foresters, mainly Brooke, which I'm like, okay, wait, that's not right because Brooke and Deacon was cool too. But. You have, quote, unquote, the force is kind of against Deacon and, the hip, you know, being a hypocrite and stuff. When I tell you it was last Friday, the scene at the bar was the highlight of the week for me to have Sheila Carter yeah, and Deacon Sharp. And here's the thing, folks. Uh, Josh, Josh Griffin and Brad Bell, I need for y'all to do me two things. We need to, I mean, yeah, you kind of did, I don't know, Brad, you kind of did, you kind of did touch on it, but I need y'all to remember that this is not the first time they've met, that they do share yeah. our history, okay? Young and the Russell's fans who watch Bold, you know what I'm talking about, Bold is fans, you don't understand, here's the deal. Sheila's other two kids, Ryder and the other girl, um, that's Sheila, Daisy. those are Sheila's kids who work with Deacon. Deacon Daisy, and Brad Daisy, Ryder. Daisy. <clears throat> I know we don't like to say um, that name, but it's Ryder and Daisy. The only the only Daisy I will acknowledge is Daisy Fix and Daisy Duck. Anyway, so <laughs> just saying. So <laughs> Ryder and Kevin. Deacon had a I love had a show. history <laughs> and it had Amber. Okay, so forward moving forward. When Sheila and Deacon was yeah. like saying, do, do you know, do people think we're really this bad? And Deacon was like, They think about you this bad, not me. And I'm thinking 
you know what, boy, you, you need to sit somewhere. But then I was like, yeah, I agree with you. When she said we should, t- you know, team up and make the forces pay because everything they put them through. This is, I'm going to be honest. This is what a soap is. This is what happens when you get two quote unquote baddies to join forces together to take people down who right. wronged them, even though we always thought of them as right. But after years of thinking about it, it's like, okay, Brooke. Like, again, I think out of anything, Brooke has been the one I'm just, like, kind of shaking my head at because I'm like, Brooke, Deacon was your AA sponsor, like, like his, your friend. Not only that, but you slept with him behind your daughter's back. Not only that, but, like, you're a hypocrite on top of a hip- hypocrite. When I Wait, say that I'm yeah. down, yeah. she was just crossing over there. <laughs> Not only did she sleep with him behind her daughter's back, but she had a kid with him. True, and the daughter, yeah. and the daughter gave birth to help help deliver that baby. Ah, that's why we always so said we there have, should be some oh, issues. Bridget. Wait, what? We have bridges. We, should, we have hope. I mean, come on. I mean, you know, it's not. Like, that could have been not, like I don't understand why they never went there with both on both. I never will understand why they right? never had bridges Me versus too. hope. But we're gonna okay. let. But I you know, know what? CBS? If this was all, if this was, if this was all my children. It would have it would have happened, but that's another story for another day. But the thing is, wait, is that wait, 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 I'm gonna evoke I'm gonna evoke an all my children moment here, because as far as I know, Adrian Franz is not doing much work right now, and if ever, if ever, there is a time to bring Amber back to the canvas. They're saying this with little D. If with little ever, there is a time to bring Amber back to the canvas, which would also leave room for Jacob Young. Thomas and Amber. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, oh, my God. Tom, oh, my God, Thomas and Amber. Oh, my God. So I oh, am yeah. really hoping that this is what, what in the soap world we call an umbrella storyline, that there's going to be mm-hmm. spokes of this umbrella that we don't even realize right now. Right. But, yeah, but I'm all for Sheila and Deacon, but I do have a request. I do not need a sexual relationship to come from this. I just no. need it to be partners in crime. No, I, I really don't. But yeah, to okay. me, I don't see Sheila and Deacon as, like, lovers. I don't see a one-night stand. I see, you know, this, you know, back-and-forth animosity to each other because it's like, okay, I can't trust you. I can't trust you. You're Sheila Carter. I know your record. I I want I want them to play those beats, but at the same okay. time, I do right. not. What bothers I don't. me? What bothers me is there really has been no reference to the children that are common to Sheila and Deacon. That really bothers me. There's, they should have found a way to introduce that into into where we are now. However. I'm going to disagree with you on that piece. If Mm -hmm. in this whole piece, the bringing them to where they, their, their feelings of justice are matched, that they find something that brings them to, Oh, let's throw down a little bit. I won't be that mad about it because obviously, you know, Quinn has no feeling for Deacon Obviously. Brooke has no feeling for Deacon. There's nobody on the campus right. that's saying, oh, Sheila, she's she's pretty hot. You know what? Even though she's a little loop-de-loo, I might give her a run for my money. Let's, let's you know, let's boom, chicka, pow, pow, and catch. So there's no sexual chemistry for either of those characters with anyone that's on the canvas right now. So if, in their machinations, it brings them to that place. I won't be that upset about it. However... Having said that, in those machinations, oh, God, please, Bold and the Beautiful, please, please, please. As far as I know, Adrian France, and, and Adrian, if you're out there and you're listening and you are doing stuff hey, that girl. I don't know about, please give us a call. But as far as I know right now, your, your, your plate, as far as acting is concerned, is not full. Great oh, job on Beyond Salem, by the way. Great job with Beyonce. Yes. Yep. Oh, my God. Great job yeah. with Beyonce. Yes. Uh, we, yeah, we got to oh, talk God. about it. We got to have an episode where we talk about that, too, even though, you know, Canada, you've never seen it for the first yeah. time. But real quick, I want to say Let's... this. Now, if they can get, if if the, if the Sheila tries to plot and get Finn away from Steffi to Hope's orbit, that's going to be interesting. 
That's going to be interesting. It would be. Because yeah, it's been the pawn. All right. So yeah. we need to hop we on the go on. Amtrak. We need to get on the yep. Amtrak, and we need to go head out to Salem. Um, <laughs> yeah. Please let me go first. Please. <laughs> oh, go oh first. my God. If, you, if you're growing and chuckling like that, absolutely. freaking lose it. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Okay. I'm just going to clearly say this right now. I know a lot of people are not feeling the succession storyline. I know. I, 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 I think I understand why y'all are saying this, but at the same time, as somebody who loved the first one, that actually really wrote me into Days of Our Lives as a little kid because I was like, oh, they can do this stuff yeah. on soap operas? No, uh stop playing. I am enjoying this go-around because it's <sighs> – when I say that it's tagging – it, it, the whole subject of the possession storyline is how strong is your love? And I want everybody to remember right. that. Um, because the brilliant geniuses at Days, and yes, I just said that, the fact that they're revisiting this around the time of Deidre's and the show's anniversaries, because that's coming up soon. Well, Deidre's passed, but it was still, you know, this year. The fact that they had Mr. 96 years old and still doing things around the youngins here, Bill Hayes, to be the devil. Uh-huh. The fact that uh-huh. Dave, that and I will give, wonderful. I'm going to give Ron, Ryan, Dave, <laughs> Carolyn, all, Richard, all of you guys, because a lot of people say I don't like Dave's writers, but I, you know, I do respect them. The fact that you actually got us, the fans, you tricked us. And I want to tell okay. you, that was the best Okay, girl, trick. wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, hold up. No, 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 wait, 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 hold up. Wait, wait, wait. 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 So they got us, but they didn't get they the regular got us. fans. They didn't get the regular fans. They got oh, everyone. Let me be honest. Yeah. They got she knows hey, no. They got, yep. they got, they got everybody. They got, they got everybody. Radio. Because we thought they, to they ourselves, did. oh, Oh, you want to be able to do a dimensional storyline? Oh, oh, oh. Dude, and they were going to try to do it you. right, too, because we, we forget boom, about Caroline Brown. Boom. boom. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Doug is possessed by the devil, and he's come back when from I Romana. Saw, when, when I saw oh. Ron, Ron, Ron's interview, I think it was in Soap, Soap, uh, Soap Harbor Digest, and he said, you know, he – he right. realized that the fans were going to think that because of what happened on Young and Russes and on General Hospital and stuff. Even though they uh-huh. did do it years ago. We ain't forget what y'all did either. Repetitive, but the fact that he kind of trolled, yeah, because the fact that he did troll the soap fans, this is the kind of stuff that makes you interested in the soap and actually it's like one of those like, oh, my God, they got us. Like, dang, we didn't. We we read the spoilers and everything. We all no, put Candace, two and two right. together. Like Candace and David. Yeah. Candace and David. Yeah. If this yeah. right now as we're speaking, tell yeah. me Ron and crew didn't get you. Tell me they oh, didn't get me. you. He got when, me. When he Doug got me. Julie in yeah. that freezer, you thought, oh, my God, here's Alzheimer number three. They're going to jump on the Young and the Restless and the General Hospital yeah. bandwagon. Yeah. yeah. They got yeah. me. They got me. I've been watching so yes. since I'm three years old at my grandmother's they got me. knee. Yeah, they got, they me. got me. But then, then that Friday, they, when that scene, and I remember, I was on my lunch break because I took a late lunch, and I literally dropped. <laughs> I literally girl, dropped. You didn't want to go back to your kids. Admit it. You said to yourself, "Oh, screw these kids. They'll be okay. I'm gonna keep watching." Come I was on, girl. Like, Admit wait. it. I was like, wait, I was like, wait, I was like, wait, what the, what the, because when Bill, when, when Doug said, I know who you are, and then all of a sudden, I hear the music, and I'm like, okay, something is about to happen, like, you know, and then when he said, I've been waiting over 25, I'm like, what the heck? I'm like, no, yeah. I said, yeah. no, I said, no, I was like, no, 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 and when I say, like, okay, Bold and Beautiful always got this 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 prop, well, not this prop, this praise for always going left when we always thought they would go right. Not a lot of soaps mm-hmm. can pull off what, what they pulled off. And days, because they take 500 years into the future, and every spoiler is so detailed, right? It was like, okay, yeah, we did assume 
the worst. We was like, okay, yeah, he's 96 years old. Maybe this is his swan song. That's why a lot of people wanted Kristen Alfonso to come back if they were going to do it, you know, to have hope and stuff like that. When I tell you that they got us, it was like April Fool's Day. Yeah. CBS, this is how you do the joke right on April Fool's Day. Just saying. But um, I was like, okay, when he said, he said Lock and Julie was the best thing that happened to him all week, I'm like, Huh? And I'm like, okay. Now we got Paul Doug. He is in Bayview. He's now they think he's crazy, okay? Because they keep thinking that he something he keeps saying something's wrong, but nobody believes him. Poor poor guy, right? But don't worry poor because dog. the devil is busy. The devil is busy because even though he has possession of Marlena, it's at 50 percent right now, meaning that fifty percent of her is still kind of in control, but fifty percent of the devil is controlling her because when she was doing a therapy session, I don't see right there. That's wrong. That I get it now. I get I get why the devil is doing it. While she was having a therapy session with her beloved Ben. Oh, by the way, let me just tell you about Ben and Sierra real quick. <laughs> so as we all mm-hmm. know, Sierra wants to have a baby with Ben, a little cinder bun. Isn't that so cute? Cinnabon. So that's what they call yeah, it. Cinnabon. Sin, you get, you know, yeah, like a sin, cinnabon, you know, sin. Yeah, I got sin. Okay. Anyway, so Ben was always kind of like hesitant of having a baby. Okay, Sin fans, look, I love y'all and everything, but I need y'all to understand that this is not the first time he's addressed this situation because when he thought that Thomas, or was it Charlotte, when he was with Abby, he thought that the baby gene would also have, like, the mental health was going to be passed on to the baby. This has already been addressed. But they really addressed it right. where he was just, like, kind of just freaking out because just like alcoholism, pro- problematic behavior is is something that can go to through the family gene pool. So he was worried about that. But no, 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 Dr. Marlena, Mar Devil, said you mm. need to address this with Sierra. The devil, however, when Marlena played the recording back, the devil's like, I got big plans for this child. Tell him to go home and make love to his wife. And everything. And that's what Marlena, the devil, told Ben, is to go home to your wife, make passionate love to her, and everything is going to be okay. Okay, they go, home, they go home. Ben is, like, agreeing to it. Like, Sierra's, like, over the moon about this. I'm like, girl, chill out. Like, so they start getting it on, right? All of a sudden, a gust of wind blows through the door. You know what that yeah. means? If you watch a horror movie, that means this. That means the spirit is there somewhere. And they decide to curl up and watch Rosemary's Baby. Okay. You know oh, what, goodness. Ron? Dave, here's the thing. Stay off of my social media page. Because I kept saying I wanted to. Okay, do wait, that. wait, wait. I'm going to weigh in here. Here's the deal. Yep, this go ahead. is perhaps, you know, we've got Luke and Laura. In Wyndham's, we've got Luke and Laura on the run. We've got Luke and Laura, you know, looking out over the balcony and, oh, my God, she's alive. We've got Reba, Reba and the clone, et cetera, et cetera. There are a couple <laughs> of storylines that are absolutely, without a doubt, soap. I, I don't even know what to call it. It transcends everything. Soapy Nobody goodness. but... Nobody but Soap has ever taken this on. Nobody but Soap has ever taken yep. on. They've done it in the movies. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. name me. Name not, me. Not not not, not 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 well, well so, like you said, like you just said, you just now said the, the TV show Soap, and that's what a lot of people have been referencing for a long time because there were two characters on the TV soap, uh, TV show, it was a sitcom back in the 70s on ABC called Soap, and there was two characters on there. One was sort of the um, Scarlet, she was a little, little frisky, and then she met a guy who was a priest, and his mother, who also played the same mother on Angie, Mm-hmm. I remember that show too, and I wasn't even born. Um, she cursed them, and so the devil possessed the baby and everything. Go on YouTube; it's, it's available. That's what everybody's been referring to. This yes. storyline. There was, there was also yeah. a ventriloquist with a dummy, et cetera, et cetera, which was the precursor to oh. to Timmy on Passions. Um, yeah, but I but I digress. 
Soap was an amazing, right. amazing show. But really, it honestly, was. You couldn't do that today. Yeah, you couldn't do no, that. Show you today. can't. Mm-mm. So no. here, here's the deal, everybody out there. This is from Days of Our Lives, 1966. Was it? I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but from from the inception of Days, this is the storyline, the one storyline that revived this show that brought this show back from the brink of cancellation that brought this show from yep. the, back this from the brink of death. One. This is one number yeah. one. This, this is the storyline that when you ask that soap opera everybody. fans across the world, what was the one storyline that, that brought you every day to the edge of your couch sitting there watching? This is the one storyline that Luke raped Laura, they're gonna and they ended up married, one. and she was dead, et cetera, et cetera. And we, mm-hmm. we, we went along with all that. Luke and Laura is the most iconic super couple of all time. Absolutely. But the, one of the most okay. iconic storylines of all time is the possession storyline on Days of Our Lives. Everybody, mm-hmm. whether you want to admit it or not, they were watching to see where, you were, where they were going to go with it. So God bless and, and, Days of yeah, and and let me just say this real quick. Um, because I felt as though when the story was mentioned a lot, and I'm just going to, this is Candace, is going to have soapbox, I know we're, we're, we're cutting time here. This is what happens when, um, if you're a diehard fan, this will touch you. And let me explain why I said this. I know yes. I'm going to get some heat. No, girl, yes. It, yes. I... I knew of Days of Our Lives growing up because of my family and everything. I knew John, Marlena, Bo, and Hope and all that stuff. But like I said earlier, and this was around the time of the O.J. Simpson trial, you know, this, you know, like when soaps really needed to come back. It right. seems like it's like last year it was, it and everything be. comes back again. And right. I remember, like, Days of Our Lives doing certain storylines that I was like, wait, they can actually do this on soaps? The Buried Alive storyline with, Car- with Carly still ranked in my supreme. But the devil possession, considering that they touched on this back in 95, in 2007, and now. And the thing is, like you just said, when you think of the top 10 iconic storylines of all time, you do, I'm sorry to say this, folks, Luke and Lord may have the highest rating wedding of all time, which still has not been beaten, okay? But when it comes down to it, Marlena being possessed is such an iconic moment in soap history. The fact that even before this storyline, if you go online and everything, they were like, like, how, like it honored Deidre Hall. Yes, you know, James E. Riley, who the, two days ago, it was the anniversary Candace, of his passing. Candace, yeah. mm-hmm. I'm going to stop yeah. you right there. The highest rated soap opera episode. Episode. Oh, you know, yeah. One oh, yeah. or two or two um, well, shows I mean, in a row say, you had of to all time you had to say is when, well, let me just, when John yeah, realized yeah. that Melena was possessed and started to try to address it, yeah. those are the two highest rated beyond Luke and Laura's wedding. The highest mm-hmm. rated soap opera episodes of all time actually go to Days of Our Lives when John realized that, Mariah, that Melena was possessed. Yeah. So right I mean, there. It's, it's, yeah. Right there. I mean, this is, yeah, and this is the thing is that with this storyline, you know, I always, you know, people say when the story came out, oh, I'm not going to watch it. This is, this is, this is, this is not going to get a rating. Okay. This is the purpose of the soap is to get right. ratings. Thank you. Um, not only that, right. but it, it really is, it's kind of shocking because I heard this excuse, oh, I'm not oh. watching it because my, my favorite character and couple isn't a part of it. Let me tell you right now. This whole storyline actually started with Johnny's movie script, okay? Because it was about Sammy, Basically. and it was going to trickle with, with with Lucas and EJ, and then John and Marlena. But now he's re- he discovered that his grandma was the, was the devil. That is tying into Chabby, because Chad wanted to play uh, John, but now EJ, oh God, EJ wants to play. He's giving EJ the money. He's going to play John. You have Abby playing Marlena. You know what that means for Chabby and EJ? EJ and Abby, uh, right? Okay. You nah, have mm-hmm. Chan- uh, did Chanel. Sammy, did, did Sammy get herself kidnapped or not? 
You know that's right. gonna play. You don't know. Exactly. Play out. Oh, right. girl. oh girl. You have Please. you have John Molly. You have not only the devil stuff, but you also have John and Ronan talking. Right. You have so yeah. many people already invested into this. Here's where the new blood comes into. It is the baby. It's not Ben and Sierra. Oh no, because like the ch- like devil said, the child is going to be in pure innocence, but with evil. That is true. That is so true because that's Marlena. If you guys go back to the original dialogue, the devil said Marlena was a mixture of purity and evil because of Stefano Demir. Because Stefano Demir, because of his brainwashing, mm-hmm. opened the floodgates to the devil being put, the devil the devil to tap into Marlena. Fast forward, you have Ben. Ben is also trying to go to a good place, but he does come from evil. This is what a so is deal. Deal. Wait, it's touching. Here's the deal. But, yeah. It's not yep. going to be a baby that we already know about. In the end, it's right. going to be a baby that pops up at the very end of the storyline. You and I both know this, Candace. Come on. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm just going to hmm. say this. This devil possession storyline, because Deidre said it herself, I thought, well, I'm going to be honest, I thought it was just going to be a Halloween thing. I thought it was going to be November 6th. I thought it was going to be December. I thought it was going to be January. No, this is going to be going until February. That's if the strike... Okay? All right? Here's the thing. If you're a true day... If you're a Days of Our fan, let me just say this. If you're a Days of Our Lives fan, the story is still lukewarm. Right now, yeah, more than John and Marlena. Yeah. This is, this is more than well, John and yes. Marlena. Yep. This is Chan and Abby. It's EJ and Abby. It's Ben and Sierra. It's going to be other people because you know it's going to come it's down EJ to EJ and as Sammy. Well. Say, yes. Stay, the, all I can say is stay tuned and watch Dave. And this is me saying it. Yep. I have enjoyed the fact, yep. the fact that they had Doug and Julie. And Paulina was in this mix. I mean, Paulina, Paulina knows of course the devil possession too. That's a best friend, apparently. But I yeah. just feel as though like this storyline, yeah, I know, again, 25 years ago versus 25 years later, things have changed. But the one thing that I will say is that they're honoring the iconic storyline with the, with the people that was a part of it the first time. And they're recreating it in a movie format. Because even, I love, I love Johnny's line when he said, bottom line is, see, yeah, I'm making a movie, but bottom line is people will want to see EJ as John Black and not you, Chad. And I'll be honest, if this was a real movie, I like Dan, who plays EJ. I think he's a great guy. I like Billy Flynn as well. But if we're doing a movie version of all this, I'm sorry, EJ would win hands down. Hands down. Uh, I got to I, I, I gotta, gotta gotta go in with you. Much time. We got to move to General Hospital. Okay. Mm. All right. Mm. I've been waiting the whole mm. show for this. So here we go. You ready? Mm. David, mm. you ready? Go ahead. Candace, mm-hmm. you ready? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. If Hayden or Holly are not the other person that's screaming in the prison, I'm going to be really pissed off. Now, we both, we all know that Holly recently in real life got engaged, et cetera, et cetera. I hope that it's the and biggest red herring. Yep. I hope it's the biggest red herring and it's Holly in, in that ring. Um. Okay. Let me, let, me, let me jump back across the ocean, back to Port Charles itself. I love me some Ava. Oh, girl, I love me some Ava. She hit all the right beats, Dawn. all the right way, getting Spencer arrested, going to Nina, planting the seeds with Carly. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. She's, she's doing her thing. Myself. You have wasted this woman for about seven months. Oh, thank you for bringing her back the right way. Yes, yes, yes. I need me some Laura back because we need some wrap-up to that storyline. Um, I am not as invested as I'd like to be in the Anna Valentine storyline, but I'm hoping that they will change my mind on that. And Austin? I'm hoping. Oh, what can I say? Okay. There is, is it, does it I still don't, hold true, Anthony? What had a, what you had a, uh, well, a couple shows back, you mentioned that eventually Nina will be paired with Austin because she won't oh. have a place to hang on to. Is that I'm still? Absolutely. 
I am absolutely sticking to that. Here's the deal. It's going to blow up with Austin and Maxie when Austin gets wind that Maxie was um, – uh, uh, that Maxie understood what was going on all along. And they're going to throw Austin and Nina in some kind of whatever, 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 to throw foil to whether or not the Jason, Carly, Sonny, Nina. But we're not going to see that for a couple of months down the road. So don't look for that right now. But guarantee, just mark my words, six, seven months from now, we're going to be talking about Austin and Nina. I guarantee it. But between now and then, we're going to see a lot. I did, I was pervy to seeing today's General Hospital. So I'm going to say this. I have loved the Nina and Sonny slash Mike storyline from its inception. I did too. I am very, very, very much in the minority. However, I think G, G, General Hospital dropped the ball. I think they should have left Sonny without his memory for a lot longer. I think that Jack should have invoked and forced Sonny coming back to Port Charles without his memory and having the whole storyline of of repeating the storyline of when Jason became Jason, when Jason shifted from Jason Quartermain to Jason Morgan. I think they should have repeated that storyline in reverse. They haven't done that. I'm going to move on from that. I'm, I'm not grieving that as hard as maybe I would have in, in other times in life. Having said that, I'm still really rooting for a resolution between Nina, Sonny, and Carly. Um, I don't want them to drag this out for too much longer. Does Carly know? Doesn't Carly know? They obviously, if you watch today's episode, Sonny knows what Carly oh. and Jason were feeling. Now it's time for right. Carly and Jason to know what Sonny and Neil, you know, what Sonny and Nina were feeling. Do I okay. think ultimately that Sonny belongs belongs with Nina? No, but I want to see that play out for as long as it can possibly play out. All right, I'm going to throw. I have other things to say about GH, but I'm going to throw my baton to Go ahead. Candace because I know she's got a lot to say on this right now. Candace ha- Candace's phone has died, and it's just you and me right now. Oh, okay. Well, then... She's going to try. I'm, I'm, then I'm going to continue. Yeah, I am go ahead. just we about gotta... at the end of my caring, feeling anything. The, the Drew... You know, Peter, all of that universe, I'm just basically at the end of my caring about it. Now, something could happen in the next couple of days that reignite the fire that I feel. I don't, I don't believe that the victor confessing to Valentine is a lie. I actually think that's the truth. I hope it's the truth. If it's a red herring, I think it's- I'm going to be... Go ahead, David. I think, I don't know. I, I go back and forth with it. Um, I think I thought it was a ruse just to get him to go along with his plan. But I don't know now. And I don't know. I think because it was, to me, it dropped the ball. It should have been more of a bang revelation. But I don't know. I, I, I think. I think there was something missing in that revelation. There should have been more to it. He should have found out another way. I don't know. Yeah, but think about it. Right now, we're all assuming that it's just bull, bull, poopy, 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 because Victor needs him on board. If it is Because true, Victor needs him. Exactly. But if it is true... Doesn't it line up all the ducks in a row for a lot of storytelling? Yeah, for the rest of the Cassidyne family. Exactly. I'm going yeah. on. I'm going on the assumption that 
maybe even Victor doesn't truly know right now whether it's real or not, but I'm going on the assumption that ultimately it's going to end up being real because you've got Nicholas and Spencer who have a legitimate claim to the Castellan fortune because Valentine is actually Elena's son and not Nikos' son. But right. what happens if Valentine is actually Nikos, uh, 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 Victor, and Helena's Victor's son? Victor's son. He's got a he's got more of a claim than anyone does. Yeah, because Alexis he's included. The oldest. Alexis included. Alexis included. So I'm actually going on the assumption that whether or not Victor knows for sure it's the truth going to end up being the truth. And that's going to be some great storytelling. I love it should be. Ava, Ava having Nicholas arrested. I love Anna and Robert's banter back and forth on Valentine. I love yes. that Valentine yeah. is in the position that – honestly, as far as GH is concerned, other than the woman that's in the room screaming and we don't know who she is, it's either going to be Holly or Hayden. I'm betting it has to be. it's more – I'm betting more that it's Holly and that we still have a, a, a couple of layers to uncover before we get to Aiden. But, you know, that's just me yeah. and, and almost 40 years worth, worth of watching soaps. Um, I need them to step up and bring back into orbit Finn and Elizabeth because... Yes. They need to we all know because of Hayden. Rebecca Hurst is coming back to Canvas in um, uh, early December. So she's going to be filming at GH in early December. That means we're probably going to see her on screen mid-January. So we need to solidify the Elizabeth Finn relationship before Hayden gets back. Right. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Chase, I'm not. I'm sorry. I know you love him, but Chase right now, I'm not feeling anything with him. Brooklyn, Maxie, I love where they're telling this story. Uh, I don't know. What else, David? Throw me a question. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm not truly invested in Michael and Willow. Uh, I don't find them rootable at all. No, Michael and, and Willow, we, we, you know, it's, it's one of those situations where we all came to, to, to see the boat off and we all had our, our confetti, et cetera, ready to throw at the boat. And instead of the boat, the boat sailing off into the harbor, it just sunk right there at the pier. I, I, I'm not they don't, in them right now. I'm not. Uh, I, I'm saying, oh, yes, I do have. I do have, I do have a special uh, affection for Chase. I felt sorry for him. I think he was dealt. Um, I I can't see them doing something like that to probably one of the most uh, sweetest men on the canvas, character wise, and but he was so adult about it. Um, I was expecting him to go off the handle a little more, and I was surprised that he didn't. But that's why I I find I find Michael and Willow a little on the hypocritical side. Do you find him and and um, Brooklyn as a credible a credible couple? Uh, yeah, eventually I think. I think they'll head that way. Um, I do. I think I like their interaction. I like the chemistry. Where I don't find a a rootedness within the storyline and chemistry is Sasha and Brando. I'm sorry. I want to feel for them, but I don't. There's, you know, that cute little laughing and interaction, getting into the elevator, et cetera, et cetera. Oh. It, it, it warmed my heart and all, but I just don't. I don't feel them as a couple. We got to say good night, Anthony, because we got one minute. All right. Well, folks, Take Two Radio will be back in two weeks. We will probably have an interview on that night, but don't count on it 100%. Uh, keep watching the four remaining daytime soaps. 
please check out Forever in a Day. Our Candace, who is executive producer, writer, ex- oh my God, she's just. And please come back in two weeks for another stimulating, fabulous episode of J2 Radio. David, thank you as always. Thank you. Candace, thank you as always. Thank Pam, you. Can, uh, Caroline, and Willie, we missed you. And we'll be back in two weeks. See you in two weeks, everybody. Good night. Get connected with Take Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit TakeTwoRadio.com.